going to cover in chapter 6 is 6.8, which is on mechanisms and arrow pushing. This section has a whole lot of tutorial stuff in it, way more than what I'm going to cover here. So it is important that you go through this section with more detail <coughs> than what I'm going to than what I'm going to apply here. Make sure that you really understand all the problems and tutorials and things like that. In this section, we're actually going to be talking about um, the stability of carbocations. I'm not really going to be talking about arrow pushing at all because we've already talked about that in class. So that's the part where I need you to go through and do that on your own and make sure that you understand those things. The stability of carbocations, something that we haven't talked about yet, really depends on what is attached to the, to the carbon in the carbocation. For example, here is here are four types of carbocations. There's a carbon atom with three hydrogens attached to it, true positive charge on the carbon atom. A carbon atom that has two hydrogens and some kind of alkyl group, a hydrocarbon group, which we're going to abbreviate with the letter R. R is the generic abbreviation in OCHEM for it, alkyl group. Compare that to some sort of carbocation that's supposed to be an R that has one hydrogen atom and two alkyl groups. And we'll compare that to a carbocation that has no hydrogens attached to the carbon and three alkyl groups. So again, R is just some sort of hydrocarbon, ethyl group, propyl group, cyclohexyl, who knows what it is. So these are four generic types of carbocations. The first one is called a methyl carbocation. Because it's a one carbon unit. The second one is called a primary carbocation. Because it has one alkyl group attached. We will abbreviate that with uh, one in a degree sign, but it's not pronounced first degree carbocation. It's pronounced primary carbocation. Second one here is a secondary carbocation, abbreviated like that. This is secondary because it has two alkyl groups attached to the carbon. And the last one is tertiary. called tertiary because it has three alkyl groups attached. And what we find for these four different types of carbocations is that as you increase the number of alkyl groups on the carbon, you also increase stability of the carbocation. So the more alkyl groups you have on the, on the positively charged carbon, the more stable the carbocation will be. We're going to spend more time talking about exactly why this is the trend later on in the year, but right now I'll just we'll just gloss over it quickly and say that alkyl groups, these R groups, are electron donating, which means that they are going to dump electron density into the carbon atom. So over here we have no alkyl groups at all. You've got nothing to help stabilize the positive charge on the carbon atom. On the primary carbocation, you have one alkyl group. It's going to dump a little bit of electron density into that positively charged carbon, and it'll help to stabilize it. A tertiary carbocation has got three things dumping electron density into the positively charged carbon, and all of that is helping to stabilize it and make that carbon feel less of the positive charge. So that's the general trend. The more things you have attached more alkyl groups you have attached to a carbocation, the more stable it is. Carbocations are often formed as reaction intermediates.
And remember, intermediates are they're pretty stable, oscillatable compounds. If a carbocation can, an intermediate, can rearrange to increase its stability, it will. By rearrange, I mean move atoms around, reconfigure itself. This is something that is one of those concepts that we're going to come back to all year long in OCHEM. We're always going to be looking at carbocations, and we're always going to be asking ourselves, can this carbocation rearrange to form something that's more stable? For example, if you have a reaction that produces a secondary carbocation as an intermediate, it is going to attempt to rearrange itself to make a tertiary carbocation. It's going to try to find a way, and maybe it can't, but it's going to try, and we're going to talk in a second about how the rearrangement occurs. But uh, because a tertiary carbocation is more stable, a secondary carbocation is going to attempt to turn itself into a tertiary. If you form a primary carbocation, it's going to try to rearrange to form a tertiary carbocation or a secondary carbocation, anything that's better than primary. If you have a methyl carbocation, it's going to attempt to rearrange to form a tertiary or a secondary or a primary, anything that is better. Again, it's just anything that's better. The rearrangements again, which is a reconfiguration, moving atoms around in the molecule, will always occur by what we call a hydride shift. Hydride is an H minus. This is a hydrogen atom and its bond moving from one spot to another. Or by an alkyl shift, which is an R group and its bonds is negatively charged, moving from one spot to another in the molecule. So this is kind of a weird concept. Here are some examples. Whenever you look at a carbocation, whenever you're given a structure of a carbocation, you always want to ask yourself, what is that carbocation and can it rearrange? For this particular first example, you see this carbon atom is the carbocation in question. That carbocation, that carbon atom, has one, two, three alkyl groups attached to it, so it's tertiary. That means that it doesn't need to rearrange. It won't rearrange. It can't become any more stable than it already is. So it's good. Here's another example. We put the positive charge on a different carbon atom. It's going to help to draw a few hydrogens in. I'm going to draw the hydrogens in on, on the carbon that's got the positive charge. So we can see that there's, there's just two bonds there. That's why it's positively charged. And this is a primary carbocation. This is a carbon atom that has only one uh, alkyl group attached to it. When you have a primary, remember, primary will rearrange to form tertiary or secondary, anything. So what you want to do is look at the carbon atom or atoms that are adjacent to the carbon with the positive charge. That would be this guy in this particular case because there's only one. And you want to ask yourself, is there a hydrogen atom on this adjacent carbon that I can move over to the positively charged carbon? Or is there an alkyl group that I can move over? In this particular compound, we've got this hydrogen atom right here that can be moved and will be moved from its position over to the positively charged carbon. When that happens, we end up with this carbon atom being perfectly fine and this carbon atom bearing the positive charge, which is okay because now we have a tertiary carbon, which is more stable.